Now, I want to talk about something really positive because when we did question and answer in Dallas, there was like six or seven, eight, I don't know, people that came up and said, and, and they were mainly young, they said, I, I, I was going to have to, I was going to die. I had this disease, that disease. I stopped drinking sodium fluoride. I stopped drinking aspartame. I stopped taking vaccines. I started trying to eat organic. I started taking vitamin and mineral powders. And all of a sudden, this disease is gone. That disease is gone because the system doesn't want to tell you why you have the problem. They want to treat the problem once you have it. And, and I, my talk in Dallas wasn't even about uh, these issues, but, 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 but speaker after speaker was, was bringing this up. And I was talking to the crew tonight, people that know Aaron and, and Rob Dew and Richard from, from the radio and TV show. And people were coming up saying, yeah, I had lupus. And they were telling me I'd have to have all this stuff done. And I finally started taking vitamins and minerals. And all of a sudden, it's gone. And again, that's not saying in every case that would do that. The point is the system knows about real solutions that are sitting in front of you. And so the, the blueprint to defeat the New World Order is really just about waking up. And waking up doesn't mean subscribing to what Alex Jones thinks. Waking up uh, doesn't mean believing everything I'm saying. It means simply not trusting everything that's put in front of you. And, and it, it simply means investigating and learning how things work. And that sounds like a bunch of work, but it's not. It's exciting to learn how the world works. It's exciting to get knowledge. And the more knowledge you get, the more it intensifies. You don't want to just get your knowledge from a wild man like Alex Jones, and I know you don't. Look at all the guests I have on. Look at all the news we post, all the legislation, all the government documents. It's about you having having the journey of experience right along with me and adding information and calling in. That's what the solution is about, is valuing research, valuing being informed, valuing communicating with your fellow humans, that electronic and physical soapbox. That's a big part of defeating this new world order. But I've seen this term, and I want to make a bumper sticker of it, because for the last few months, reading comments on Infowars.com and on YouTube, I keep seeing InfoWars saves lives. And it was different commenters saying it. You know, my mother was going blind and, and diabetes and all this, and she finally got off the aspartame. And six months later, she, you know, she, she's got most of her eyesight back and doesn't have diabetes you know, uh, anymore. Her sugar's to the proper level. And it's like, wow, th th there it is. Just because I have some doctor or scientist or brain surgeon or epidemiologist or endocrinologist on explaining, they know all this. This is in all the studies. They know it. InfoWars saves lives. And InfoWars isn't my little website, InfoWars.com. InfoWar is saying the pen is mightier than the sword. Your voice is mightier than the sword. Long before we talk about going to arms against the government and the corrupt elements that have taken it over, we should exhaust every avenue of information. And that doesn't mean just wishing there was some media out there you could support. That means becoming your own media, doing your own local radio show, starting your own podcast, doing your own YouTube channel. Doesn't matter if it's got 10 views the first time or a thousand. That's how every great journey is begun. The, the blueprint to defeat the new world order is free humanity standing up and saying for too long we have turned over our society to the worst elements and humanity is awakening and assessing the situation and standing up and humanity is on the march for our future. Carl Rove, I think it was 2005 or so, 2006, you can pull it up. Carl Rove, We Control Reality, and you'll pull up the original articles. And the reporters are all, but you've been caught lying about this and that, and, and, and they're all standing around him at a cocktail party, the so-called elitist, and he disdainfully looked at them. The only reason they all reported on it is because they like thinking they're the insiders and they're conning the public. They didn't like having him say, you're a bunch of trash, you're a bunch of stupid scum, and laughing at him. But Karl Rove looked at him and he said, it doesn't matter if we lie or tell the truth. And this is all quoted by multiple papers because we control reality. We and the elite are history's actors and we'll change our story day to day. And then you will dutifully go and report that change in reality because you do whatever we say, we control reality. And Karl Rove could tell him that because he knows they'll just lose their jobs if they don't do what 
he wants. It was all about that disdain. Well, let me tell Karl Rove and the rest of these globalist murderers something. You don't control reality, you arrogant, prideful little piece of garbage. Pride goeth before the fall. It is going to be their own hubris that is going to bring down the globalist. It is going to be their arrogance that will defeat them. Never, never misunderstand my confidence, focus, and anger for pride or arrogance. I hate pride and I hate arrogance. I am fueled by love and by anger and by determination. That is not pride. That is necessity. You try to wake up a lot of people politically and they've already got their little fake New World Order version, left, right, whatever it is, you know, talking points they regurgitate trying to sound smart. And they think you're bringing up politics because you're acting cool and showing off to them and they'll try to spar with you. I just go, you know what, I'm not playing games with you. This is some serious stuff. You like this country shutting down? You are being warned. And that gets through to people because it cuts through. Hey, I'm not, this isn't a game for me, man. I'm humbly taking my time out to tell you about something. For heaven's sakes, at least listen to what I'm saying. Now I'll start trying to get into the speech a little bit here. <laughs> I tell you, I really can't wait to get to your questions because those are always so great. Uh, continuing here. If Richard is in the building, who's doing everything on this trip, Richard's doing the job of three or four people. Uh, can I have a glass of water, Richard? Thank you. All right, continuing here, because I yelled and screamed a little too much today already. <laughs> people think it's like, my radio voice? That's from screaming too much. Everybody wonders why these old guys, in the old days, the radio voice sounded like this. That was old guys, been on the radio 40 years, drinking Jack Daniels and smoking cigarettes. And I've, I've, I've been, in the day, I guess I had a few of those too, but I got like an 80 year old guy voice at 38. All right, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, going over these points that I have here. And, and then later I'm gonna do something different in the speech. I'm gonna let people shout out topics the last 20 minutes or so that you want me to you know, give you a comment on. And then I'll do what no one else can do. I'll interrupt my own speech that way. Anyways, I figured out a way to do it. Now, I mean, I've already talked about this. We are winning. We are having big effects. We do have the power, and it's in that realization that we win. In fact, the other day when I was writing this speech before I left uh, Austin, or just these points I wanted to go over, it's not really a speech, it's, it's just points, you know, little data points to remind me of what I wanted to cover. I had trouble stopping on all the successes that we've had against corruption when we take action. Look at Congress getting in big trouble now for insider trading. That's been going on for decades, now being exposed. Look at the success we're having all over the world. Governments are admitting that carbon taxes are a scam to shut down certain industries and raise taxes on the general public and shut down our industrial society to a great extent. Carbon taxes and the whole fake UN environmental movement that could care less about the environment is burning down in flames. It is irrevocably wrecked and that is incredibly positive. Ron Paul, a decade ago, couldn't get one, yeah. Ron Paul, a decade ago, could not get one co-sponsor to audit the Federal Reserve. Last year, it passed the House, went to the Senate, they changed it, sent it back to the House. They killed it procedurally and, and, and passed a whitewash. But the point is, we've gone from no one, except maybe one out of a thousand 15 years ago or so, knowing the Federal Reserve is a private offshore bank corporation run by a big banking organized crime syndicate on record. No one even knew that. In fact, they would say you were a conspiracy theorist if it was private. 
Remember, I mean, I remember 12 years ago, reporters calling up laughing at me from major newspapers and going, Mr. Jones, you think the Federal Reserve's private and there's big mega banks gonna take over and set up a world government? And they laugh at me. Look at how today all of this is now out in the open. Well, it is a world government run by big mega banks. And they are getting rid of the freedom in Europe and they are installing the presidents and prime ministers, but The Economist magazine and others say they're the experts. I mean, this isn't like Mussolini or Stalin. This is the bankers.